this. If you have this much space in your house, eight, you have eight feet of wall that you can press up a bunch of wood slats against and then a place for a stack of bins. This is behind my front door. This sheet and a half of plywood. And that's the entire boat. So all you really need is eight foot of open wall space to lean all these slats against. And of course I could stack these neater and a spot for some bins. And the other space you're gonna need in your apartment is another blank wall where you can lean up the decking, which is basically half inch sheets of plywood. So if you have a four by eight open wall where you can lean a sheet of plywood and an eight foot piece of open wall where you can lay a bunch of slats down and a corner for a stack of bins, you can put store this pontoon boat in your apartment easily. All right, we're out here with all the wood, uh, the planks, and the old red rocket canoe that is no longer a part of this boat setup. It was in the last iteration of the boat, but this time we're going full slats, decking, and 13 gallon bins. And I'll show you how it all gets strapped together here. I wanna take the 10 footers, use some junk plywood and put blades on the end and make and round them out and make oars, two 10 foot, actually 11 foot oars. So here are the two bottom rails, as you can see with the coupled one foot overlap, two hose clamps coupling. As you can see, it's pretty strong. That's 15 feet. Yeah, they seem to be relatively strong. So yeah, time to put the bins on and then the top rails and the side rails, and strap them all together. The two beams to the left are both on the inside of the coupling. And the two beams to the right are both on the outside of the coupling. That's one setup that changes the width of the slats quite a bit, about three inches. Both slats shifting the same direction so that they shift over about an inch and a half but the overall width between them will be constant. So I'm gonna try both, and we'll see which one kind of comes out stronger, comes out kind of easier to use. I'm kind of thinking the parallels are gonna work better because I only need one size of spacer. Here are the bins sitting on top of the bottom rails we want the rails to be sitting on the thicker, this part that I'm tapping with the very tip of the tape measure. That's where we want the rails to sit so that they don't crush this in, the softer section in. This is the more rigid, the outer section is more rigid. So looks like we want the center point of both rails at about 10 and three quarter or even 11 inches. The differing widths of the slat is really not gonna be good for me because I want to be able to make sure that I have an 11 inch gap the entire way down so that I know my rails onto the rigid parts, the outer rectangle of the bottom. Five inches of exposed bottom rail and top rail and side rails and when you put a ratchet strap around it this is a really strong kind of end cap joint uh, for the entire pontoons there will be uh, quite a bit of excess somewhere between 10 and 16 inches of excess at the front and i'm going to cut that piece shorter instead of splitting the difference and keeping all my rails like seven foot something like seven foot eight or something after i slice both of them off I'm actually gonna keep the back ones at eight feet and the front ones at something like seven foot two or even seven foot flat. And that way, my coupling joint is further toward the front of the entire vessel when I do that. Um, and that allows me to put that beam, you'll kind of see this later. It'll allow me to put my third cross beam right on the coupling in a place that's like much more convenient 
particularly for how my decking is already drilled to attach to the cross beams, I would have to possibly drill more holes to fit a different cross beam orientation. This adjustment may let me stay closer to the original and even get away with not drilling new holes for that, which looks so beat up after two trips. <laughs> the rails inside the bin match up with the rails outside the bin. We love it. About five inches sticking out. Slide all these down, cut the excess off the front, and we'll move from there. So here we switched the orientation of the pontoon bottom rails to the correct kind of left-right parallels instead of two interior, two exterior. Um, so yeah, now I can make sure I have an 11 inch width no matter which side of the coupled rail I'm on. Just have to offset the bins by about a, an inch and a half, so that's fine. Let's kind of do a test here with my knee. My hand sitting on it. I think those were already there from the store, unfortunately. I'm trying to look at the outside. Don't see any apparent bending. Or the part that is bending has like forgiveness. So I'm sitting on it with at least a hundred pounds of my body weight. And it's not flexing at all. So I'm feeling pretty happy about that. So you can kind of see the offset nature of the bins from this perspective. The rear are a little bit about an inch and a half further to right and then you see them shift over so that they can stay centered on the rail. Our excess bottom rail is all sticking out the front of the craft and the front of the craft is denoted by the two purple bins. That's going to help distinguish that this is the front of the craft. The spacer itself, you probably want it to be about nine inches lids are not watertight so you throw a sliced tarp that's slightly wider than the bins over the top and then it all gets strapped down super hard by the slats and straps and uh, it's worked it's worked a treat so far so I'll just keep chugging along so got the tarp laid on top gonna put the top rails on in a second but uh, just kind of tied two eyelets together, bunched it up. But I don't want to wrap the whole thing because I feel like that would create a ton of hydro drag. And I don't want to catch a bunch of water over the lip of the bins and lids enough to keep a splashing wave out. And sealing them with any type of agent is also kind of out of the question because you need to take the lids on and off. The tarp does a pretty good job, pretty cheap and then the rails will hold it in place at the end of my last journey and the, the insides of the bins were bone dry so basically this keeps happening so the slat <laughs> this slat here is supposed to be on bottom and that is supposed to be uh bracing the two so what keeps happening is the crank force is a contracting force and it actually pulls away, obviously. I somehow just assumed in my head if it contracted up top, it would contract on the bottom. It's actually pulling away, so the slats basically don't really do a great deal. If they were closer together, so I've got it so this and this were sitting on the very edges of the boxes because that's the strongest point and I didn't want them to dent inward from the from underneath the pressure of a central board underneath would put a big dent in it so I was trying to put the uh, split that force up and put it on one of the strongest parts of the box doesn't want to do it for me maybe I really don't want to put the strap in the water crank it and create the uh, contracting force here uh, yeah so that was a physics thing that I didn't really consider happening. It keeps wanting to pull the slats apart instead of compressing them, which I was just mistakenly expecting them to. So what I think I'm going to do is I think just eliminate it. Take this and this, just set them next to each other and they'll just stay in place via tension. 
throw the straps all the way down and uh, hopefully it'll still disperse the force but it has to be central or else it's going to get yanked around the sides uh, so hopefully it doesn't dent the bottoms too bad but that's kind of the the point I'm at. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm three hours in or something like that and uh, still working on one pontoon. This is totally like toying with all the elements trying to figure out how to put it together. So I was able to move it, drag it across the ground, pick up one end and drag the other end across the ground and it was quite stiff all the way down and this bottom thing keeps happening so we'll try to just bring those closer together and Unfortunately for the bottoms of the bins, they're gonna get smushed and we'll have to think of something. Maybe just uh, plywood? Little plywood plates? Okay. Plywood plates to divert the force that you can also just shove in and they're held in by tension. And keep tinkering. Long day, I think. We're chugging along, we're getting there. We finally have one working pontoon. The only place to work in the shade is where all the dog poop is. <laughs> Earlier I talked about wanting to use bracers on the bottom to spread the load onto the strongest parts of the bin there and there, but I don't think it just kept getting pulled around the side. So I abandoned that and just combined them in the middle Yes, they're doing exactly what I didn't want them to do, was trying to avoid, which is pulling, denting in the middle slightly. So, but it's not too bad. It's denting them in, but let's see if we can roll this. Okay, we can roll this all the way because it's super sturdy. So, just rolled it onto its side. Let's check the bend factor. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad of a dent. Uh, there's nothing like white crackling plastic and they're all in there. Super, it's like almost the perfect balance to where they're pinched. Okay, here's a bad one. That's pinched. That's pinched quite severely. But uh, it's not cracking. It's just bent. So we'll live with it. So this is kind of the underneath view. And you can see this crazy coupling <laughs> joint. That's amazing. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. The tarp is tucked in under the side rails. Any wave hits that, it's just gonna splash and roll right off back in to the water. Uh, it's super sturdy, I can roll. I just rolled the entire pontoon onto its side and then back again and uh, everything stayed put. As you can see, nice and sturdy. Back up a little bit, this thing is freaking huge, huh? Check it out. Smacking it on the ground. Hanging together. Look at that, I'm gonna snip those down a little bit. Holding it by the straps. It's, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds, maybe 50 tops. Uh, yeah, it's nice and sturdy. It's not moving it. Everything's very rigid. Uh, and it's light enough. Man, it's super awkward because it's 15 feet long, but it must be heavy. Mostly air. That's the whole point, right? Couplings are nice and strong. And uh, yeah, life is good. I don't want to break the straps. I'll hold this by the wood. Yeah, holding it by the top rails. It's awesome. 